Here, in the vast expanse of the Kabul universe, we witness the daring feats of these curious creatures known as Kabuls, capable of going for astronomically long periods of time without food, water, or even sleep, always vigilant for that next maneuver node, and able to withstand impacts up to 53 meters per second, just over 190 kilometers or 118 miles per hour. Rather impressive. Today, our brave aviator embarks on a journey through the skies, pushing the limits of aerodynamics with a zeal and determination unmatched in the cosmos. In an attempt to reach the Kerman line, Kerbals spend much of their life developing and testing crafts of all types to ensure their dependability in all situations. This one loses control, causing the loss of both craft and crew. Undeterred, it is decided that perhaps some gyro stabilization might help. Kerbals have great fortitude, but a true Kerbal never gives up, always willing to iterate and improve for the next attempt. These industrious critters feel most at home when traveling at insane relative velocities with little fear of speed or heights, usually to their detriment. It would appear that some form of a braking mechanism should be added for safety. And thusly some parachutes are promptly added to the craft, as these little wheels have no brakes. Now for a trial by fire. A vital lifeline for any test pilot to have when testing these sometimes questionable creations. With the test a success, it is time for a trial run to the island airfield. There is a long pastime with testing craft on this very flight path, and for the time, it is the only other airfield. A perfectly executed Kerbin landing, meaning it is dodgy as hell. But both craft and crew survive the landing, so it is chalked up as a win for Kerbin kind. Now with the most rudimentary knowledge of aerodynamics, they disregard the incremental approach with a design based solely on the fact that it looks cool. Clearly the aerodynamics need some refinement. Back to the drawing board. Off into the sky once again with a new iteration. A definite improvement from the last craft. However, it is questionable if the craft is up to the job of breaking through the Kerman line. The line that separates the gravitationally bound world below from the weightless vacuum of space. The intrepid Kerbal pilot ignites the afterburner, propelling the craft to extraordinary speeds, allowing it to reach higher than before. With only 25 of the 70 kilometers covered, this craft does not seem to be up to the challenge. With the design still proving to be unstable, an unfriendly terrain ahead, a successful landing is looking very questionable indeed. Clipping a wing is never a good sign, and also ends any hope of a survivable landing. This is probably why downward sloping wings only exists in the movies. Work begins immediately on a new craft, one built for function rather than form. Taking the quick and easy way out, they just build a standard jet. The new design also allows for more engines to aid in reaching the Kármán line. This time paying attention to the aerodynamic calculations and checking all lift surfaces for placement. Oh dear, the loss of the stabilizers due to the heat effect from the engine has left this pilot in a bit of a pickle. With the stabilizers moved out of the heat plume from the engines, the designers take this moment to honor another long-standing Kerbin tradition, adding even more engines.
Let's hope that the squirrely takeoff is not a sign of things to come, but a wider wheel base would help. The pilot ignites the afterburner again, drastically increasing thrust, but at the cost of fuel. It appears that in the near vacuum, control surfaces do not provide any actual control. Try as he might, there is just no chance of getting to the calm in line. Undeterred, a second attempt is given, using his descent to trade altitude for speed. The craft is thrust up once again towards the elusive Carmen line. Objective complete. Although not fully in orbit, the intrepid pilot has slipped the surly bonds of his home planet and touched space, proving that both craft and crew can survive the vacuum and radiation of space, beginning a new age for all Kerbins everywhere. However, there is still the untested realm of re-entry ahead. As the friction increases, it is converted to heat, slowing the craft. With all his fuel used on the second unplanned attempt, there is only one option, a water landing, something that has yet to be tested. With life indeed being hard when you're green, the next pilot steps up to attempt the landing, or at least not die in the attempt. I see you widen the wheelbase. Using the knowledge gained from the previous flight, altitude is needed. Then trading his altitude for speed, like some amateur Mop 2 yo-yo, impacting this Kerbal's tiny body with over 15 Gs. The dive forces an abundance of air into the engines, drastically increasing the available thrust. With the RCS thruster system, the craft can now be controlled in a vacuum so as to allow for the engine burn to continue and reducing drag. This time there is fuel to spare, allowing for our Kirbal pilot to reach shore for a landing attempt on the beach. It's looking good. Oh dear, I seem to have spoken too soon. Maybe even a wider wheelbase would be a good idea. The once soaring aircraft now rests in irreparable disorder. An outpilot, somehow flung from his craft, finds himself in the water just offshore. A reminder in the world of Carbol's space program. Any landing you can walk away from is a triumph. Join us as we push the bounds and dig into the limits of our Kerbals and their craft during the pursuit of knowledge and exploration. Warning, the shield has been depleted.